Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, please take a moment to subscribe and hit that notification button so you will be notified the next time that I drop a video. If you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. It really means a lot and I greatly appreciate it. What's for dinner for me? A pack of tuna. Cause I done already ate three pieces of chicken or two pieces of chicken. You know, I got a weight loss challenge this month. When my family came here for, um, when they evacuated for Ida, my mom was here. She cooked every motherfucking day. Every day. When I tell you every day, First day she was here, she had steeples, through steeple, gumbo. Next day she had, what I think it was, smothered pork chops, rice and gravy. Red beans, butter beans, fried chicken, meatloaf. Do I work out? No, I probably should. But listen, if I worked out, I probably could eat more. I don't eat a lot. I will tell you that. I do not. I specifically cut back on my eating because it hasn't got out of control. Like, what I feel like is our parents, now don't judge me when I say this, but our parents would always say, make sure to clean your plate. So they taught us that we have to finish our food. So much so to where now our service sizes are big. And I'm listen, I'm not trying to blame my parents. I'm just saying I feel like I'm kind of conditioned to eat for everything. Like even where I'm from, um, you eat to celebrate, you eat to mourn, like you eat to do everything. So I just had to you know, you gotta, like in the morning I, I eat, um, I try to eat two cuties or like two oranges, like cuties are the little oranges. Um, then I might do like a sippy soup for lunch and then I might do like a pack of tuna for dinner. But next week I'm doing all liquids. And then once I hit my goal weight, I'll slowly but surely uh, increase my caloric intake. Coming off of when my mama was here, with just eating, eat, I'm talking, no fucking reason. Just because the food was good. I can't say I was eating because I was hungry no more. Because I, I had to eat. But the food's so good, you just be eating again. Hell yeah, her food was good. What we did this week was fruit and vegetables. And I actually gained weight this week because... I was eating fruit and vegetables, but I was eating, I'm not gonna say a lot of it. Like I ate corn and then I found out corn is real starchy. I had green beans and then I had grapes, oranges, bananas, pineapples, like I had fruit. But then when I got on the scale, I had actually gained like, after doing that for like two or three days, I had gained like two or three pounds. It's like, oh no ma'am, we're not doing that. Mm -mm. No, ma'am, because if I'm going to gain two or three pounds, let me have a burger. Let me go ahead and have some chicken and waffles or, you know, like some, some shit. And then I had the nerve to have the cotton candy grapes. That probably got more sugar in it. The motherfuckers were good, though. I did keto before. Keto did good. For me. Oh, I love spinach. I'm gonna have to order that. You know what? I actually, right now, even during my weight loss, I'll eat pizza. But let me tell you what I do with my pizza. I never eat the bread. Like, and then I don't order pizza. I don't order breadless pizza. I have to order the pizza with the bread. And I pick the toppings off and I eat it like that. But not a lot of it. Mm -hmm. 
I like squash too. See, you're talking about all this stuff that I used to cook. Yeah, when I tell you, we will be so disrespectful to a thing of pizza. Because you'll toss the, the whole bottom back in there. Mm-mm, not thin crust. You can't do thin crust the way I do it because if you try to scoop the topping off, the, the crust so thin, you probably get some of the bread with it. I prefer the thicker bread so I can get the topping off. It's easy to get the topping off. You ready to weigh in? Listen, don't bring that pressure in this positive life. I just said earlier, I, I ate fruits and vegetables this week thinking I was, it was going to help me, and it made me gain a couple of pounds. I'm going to be ready to weigh in at the end. What if I wear a tampon? What are you talking about? My nails? This is why I tell people, if you don't like what I'm about, if you don't, like, if I, sometimes I could be loud, sometimes I could be ghetto. I'm a Christian that curses, and I wear long nails. I got a big booty. If anybody got a problem with any of that, or if anybody feels frisky enough to ask me questions like, what do you do with a tampon? Don't follow me. That's some gross-ass shit to even fucking ask. They want a picture. Bitch. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't get it either. Bitch, how can I not pull a string? <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I'm better because before when people used to ask me how you work your ass I let your nigga do it that's how I let your nigga do it he do it he, he be happy to do it I let your nigga do it I'm working lord I'm working on growth I'm working on development okay I'm working on development I'm working on being a better person I'm working on not clapping back I'm, 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 so for me, this is what I feel like you have to understand. You have to understand that everybody doesn't necessarily mean to be offensive and they don't even realize they're offensive. But I think that's what bothers me. I think that's what bothers me. For people to be grown ass adults and not realize what they can and can't say. Why you ask somebody about their vagina during their period? Like that's what, who does that? In front of over a thousand people. Who do that? Oh, people. We're going to have a very productive week this week. No, Stax is not in my left. Stax is our biggest girl. We're going to have a very productive week this week. We're going to get things done. Today is Sunday. Tomorrow is Monday. So today, before you go to bed, before you lay your, okay, before you lay your head down, I want for you. Beautiful. Hold on one second. Beautiful, you need me? I was talking to her. She just called my phone. Let me go see. Baby! Shit, I gotta get up. Um, if you have an iPhone, go in your notes. You don't have an iPhone, you have a Samsung, whatever. Put in your notes. Make a list of things that you need to get accomplished this week. Make a list of things that you need to get accomplished this week. And then, here's the second tip. Set an alarm. Hey! Hey! Chill! Set an alarm every day at a time that you're free, whether it's 3 o'clock, 12 o'clock, noon, whatever. Set an alarm for every day this week to check your list. So that way you can look at your list every day and you can be reminded of the things that you got to get done. And by Sunday, you're going to be happy that you did that because you probably will have more stuff done. What's my biggest accomplishment? Honestly, um, my biggest accomplishment, and I've done quite a lot. Let me say that. And this isn't me being cocky, but I want for you to understand just how big this accomplishment is to me. So I am a Guinness World Record holder. That's not my biggest accomplishment. I've, I, I've, you know, retired my mom. That's not my biggest accomplishment. 
I've provided jobs to many people. That's not my biggest accomplishment. Like, key to the city, plenty of um, proclamations done. Or what? I don't even know. I don't know if it's a proclamation. I don't even know what it's called and things that I got. My biggest accomplishment is when I went on tour, 2019, Judy dropping knowledge, over 5,000 people gave their life to the Lord at my uh, tour. That is my biggest accomplishment. I feel like nothing in my life has surpassed that. No amount of money, no material thing, nothing has surpassed that. Um, Yeah, I don't care. Forbes write up none of that. Nothing has surpassed that. My, I used to have bank account goals that I would have so much in the bank that nothing can surpass that. And then you had to be there to actually experience it. So um, when I taught my lesson, the very last, and I did it real strategic, the very last part of my class was pray through the process. And then after I finished teaching, um, I, I try to put all of the locations in churches. So after I finished teaching, I would ask people if they needed prayer for their business or if they needed to give their life to the Lord. And it was just phenomenal to see. It was phenomenal to see. So you was that front row. Girl, Brittany, tell me about your experience, girl. Telling people how it was, watching the people walk up to the front. How many people, like, it was like, there was, I remember my very first tour stop. I've never in my life, I've never in my life experienced this. Before I walked in a room, I felt it. It's like, my, for, my first stop was Houston. And Houston had over 3,000 people show up. And... I didn't have nobody going before me. This was a tour that Jessica Dupar by herself did. Nobody else. It wasn't like me and a group. Of, no, it was I did this by myself. I was the only speaker. There was nobody before me. There was nobody after me. And it was I was so moved to see that many people come see me speak. I was like, oh, my God, where all these people come from? <laughs> you know, like, oh, my God, it's crazy. But before I walked in a room, as I was walking in... It's like the energy was so thick you could almost see it. It, it was like the, it was the craziest thing. And I will never forget that feeling because it was so warming and it was so welcoming that it just, it just kind of, and I'd be nervous anytime I get in front of people and talk. I don't care how many people it is. I don't care how many times I do it. I'd be nervous. It just kind of relaxed me and made me just, you know, it, it, it was just, it was amazing. So. But anyway, that's my biggest accomplishment. I be trying. I be trying. I, listen, I be trying to help people so much. I feel like I be trying to help them more than they want to help their damn self. I had to give myself a break from doing that. Um, Cause it, it kind of got discouraging. Hold on a second. I feel like this TV is disrespectful. I don't even know how to turn it down. Is this the volume right here? You're on the side or? Yeah, that's the volume. That's the volume. Yes. Yes. Is it sitting there? This is Rocky sitting in my lap. Um, yeah, it get kind of discouraging. It could be overwhelming to pour your all into people or what what you what are you hungry? What you need? I, I took you out already. What you need? Rubbies. Um and you know yeah so anyway but i said what i'm not gonna do is i can't stop showing um what guinness book record do you hold giving away the most toys in an hour uh it's listed on the kaleidoscope hair products you can google it it was in 20 damn what year was that i got the plaque here i think it was 2018 or 2019 but you could google it it was in New Orleans. It was me and Super did it. She she listed hers as the crayon case, and I listed mine as Kaleidoscope hair products. So our companies actually hold the records. Brutiful. That's how we say it. Brutiful. And you know what the funny thing about that is? 
And you don't have no, you have any underscores in it? No. Okay. Girl, I'm gonna tell girl. Ain't nothing to tell. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm glad you asked that. Baby, what are um the, the, the treats for the dogs? Facts has been she I don't know what's wrong with it, but she keep I took them out and everything. I think she just wants something to chew on. The people say they love you, beautiful. Yeah, I'm cutting into my where, where I put it? Oh. Cutting into your your hair time. I'm sorry, I just needed to know where the treats were. Beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> would you like for me to do it or would you pass it out? Would you like to pass it out? Let me do it. <laughs> Here you go, babe. Stax likes two. She likes two big ones. Here. Oh, girl, she about to climb up here. She, yeah, she will. Yeah, Stax, this way. Look, Stax, this way. Hey, look. This way. This way. Look, this way. Come this way. All right. She's so Okay. Girl, go ahead. <laughs> it, it's your uncle that read it. He shouldn't have read it. Yeah, I, she must have called them or something. And they said, we talked to Shiny. She done called Ebony for me. You can't answer what? Girl. <sighs> Loyal. Here's the thing. Here go your second one, baby. Jesus, you hear? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why people be hating on me? Because they hate on everybody. If you ain't being talked about, you ain't doing enough. People talk about you because they can see you. They see what you're doing. So the only way people can talk about you is they would have to see or hear about what you're doing. So if people are hearing or seeing what you're doing and have an opinion, it's because you've made it in the visibility of the people. So, if you learn how to spin that and make profit off of it, or if you learn how to spin that, <laughs> you know, and leverage it to your advantage, I'm, a, I'm big on turning a positive into, I mean, turning a negative into a positive. I listen. I love for somebody to tell me I can't do something. I love for people to say, oh, no, she can't do that. She ain't going to be able to do that. Oh, I'm going to show you, bitch. I'm going to do it twice. Record it and then post a video about it. That's what I'm gonna do. Tell me I can't do something. Tell me what I can't do. Tell me what I can't do. I'm gonna do it twice. Once for me, once for you. I'm gonna make sure to film the whole thing and then do the playback for you. That's 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 what I'm gonna do. Like, like I um in the beginning for me, right? In the beginning when I first started selling hair products. I was selling hair products and I was selling hair. And nobody was really doing the barter system back then. Nobody was doing the barter system. And I was finding people that were in my city that were popular. And I was saying, I'm going to give you free hair, as much free hair as you want. I'm going to do your hair as often as you want. And all I need you to do is post for me. Everybody called me stupid. Everybody said the people was using me, and little did they know I was making them girls come get their hair done because Super ain't give a shit. Super ain't feel like leaving her house. I would have to go to her house and do her hair. But the visibility that I got out of it in exchange far surpassed the value of the hair that I bought, far surpassed the value of, of my time on what I charged for that hairstyle. Like, so them same people came to my class. And, and wanted the lesson on what I did. <laughs> the same people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, the, them same people. So I, that's why I say I love for people to tell me what I can't do. Because it makes me even more so want to do it. Like, it, it's like, thank you. I needed that. I needed that. Yep, moral of the story, ignore the naysayers. Or if you're going to listen to the motherfuckers, take a screenshot of it. Take a screenshot of it and get to work. Take a screenshot of it, get to work, and then when you accomplish that goal, put it side by side. And now that we got the green screen opportunity, green screen that hoe. If it's a comment, put that comment behind you. 
I remember on this date this was said. Well, I just came to check in, you know? <laughs> just came to check in to tell you how I did it. I not only did it, I did it twice. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm gonna go back and do it one more time just for you. You right here that said this. <laughs> like, well, you have to, I feel like they have so many things in life, right? That you cannot, you can't change. Like, when you talk about health um, and a sickness, like a chronic illness or something, or you talk about, you know, like, you, you want a person to be different. Like, there are certain things that you just cannot change. So I feel like when we put energy into shit that don't really take away from us, make us no money or nothing, it's like a waste of time. Like, I feel like you can't let that type of stuff penetrate your brain. And if you do, it has to go into the area that fuels you and not that drains you. Because social media has become so saturated with negative energy that you will be depressed. This, this app, these apps weren't, weren't, weren't made for us to get on here and be depressed. What happened was... To me, the creators of these apps did these things to monetize. And then once they felt, started seeing all the rest of us monetizing, because, you know, they're able to see how many people click through and everything. Once they start seeing people monetize, my bad, then it became a controlled environment. And then we had a stupid ass president that made people think it's OK to spew hate all day. So they translated. Oh, they being real. Like, they translate, you know, hate to, oh, no, this person is just being real, giving their opinion. Bitch, that still don't mean it's okay to say it. Like, why, why? What is the character trait that makes somebody go underneath somebody's picture that they posted of themselves, where they were feeling themselves that day. They might be fighting depression. You never know what's going on with them. They, 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 they might be having a loved one that they're losing to a COVID battle, right? And you go on their page to say, yeah, that outfit cute, but you need to lose weight. What makes, what makes, what is the character trait that makes people want to say that? Like, if you think it's not cute on them, why not just scroll by? Why, why not just scroll by? Why the fuck do you stop? And not only that, but you stop and you type it. You literally type it. Oh, girl, that's cute and all, but you might want to lose a few pounds. So anyway, we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to get that too much energy today. We're not going to get that too much energy. I just don't get it. I don't get it. But y'all know what that is? That's, um, that's, uh, people's insecurities are projected onto other people and people don't even realize it. Like, what I've experienced personally, I can tell you what I've experienced personally. People will say, y'all already know my story. Had my first child at 15, second at 17, third at 19, miscarriage of twins in between those two. Put out the house at 17 um, and, and just went for it. Like, like I, I was doing hair out of the house, uh, bust my ass, I work really hard, and, and this is where I am. And I'm so transparent with y'all because I try to tell people anything is possible. But then people will say, oh no, this happened for her. Just like somebody said, it was a few weeks ago. That's because you got celebrities in your pocket. Celebrities been posting for you. I had to pay celebrities to post for me once I could afford it. I, I didn't start there. That wasn't my starting point by far. They, wouldn't even, they wasn't even responding to my emails or nothing in the beginning. You know, so my bag was nowhere near what it is. So when people say stuff publicly that diminish somebody's accomplishment, it really bothers me because 
this person speaking about their journey or speaking about their accomplishment and saying what they did, they're obeying God, right? Because God doesn't bless us for nothing, right? So they're obeying God. So now that they're obeying God, it's hard enough to be able to publicly discuss stuff like that because people always want to say, oh, you're just showing this, you're just showing off, whatever, whatever. So it's already hard enough to get on a social platform and tell y'all, oh, hey, listen, I had this accomplishment. But because I'm obeying God, I have to show y'all my journey. I, I'm the person that show you my struggles, my ups and my downs, right? So when they obey God and they get attacked, it just becomes... It becomes heavy for the person to do it again and or the people that are paying attention are now going to question if it's authentic or not. When the person that made the post, it was authentic. I came on here to be very transparent with you. I came on here to tell you, bitch, if I could do it, I ain't never been to college. I would had popped three kids out my vagina before the age of 20. Like if I could do it, anybody could do it. Don't don't come and say, oh, no, she lied, she cheated, stole. You know, like, if you see the nigga be done, like, the thing that I often say is, how many, like, for me personally, I say, how many different multimillionaires need to come out of New Orleans before people actually think it's possible? Why? It, 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 first, it, first it was, oh, no, Judy did this. And then it was the next person, oh, no, they did that. Oh, no, this person. Everybody. So everybody that, everybody that made it. You watching every single last person climb up this ladder and you watching how, like you watch their life. These people go live, so you with them all day. These people uh, like let you in on their life so much so you become invested to where you actually seeing the stuff happening in real time when it's happening. But y'all still saying it's not what it is. Like a bitch gets tired of trying to convince y'all that it's possible. Like, if y'all want to struggle, just say that. Just say you want to struggle. Just say I'm so, I'm, my self-esteem is so low that I can't, I don't believe that I could do it. Bitch, no. I, it's like, I'm here to tell you, bitch, if I could do it, you could do it. I had a baby at 15. You hear me? 15. 15. I am a grandmother. <laughs> Before the age of 40, because I, and listen, I would have been a grandmother earlier if my daughter would have been like me. I would have been a grandmother at 30 if my daughter repeated my pattern. So, that's all I'm saying. Like, if people can just see that shit is possible and they go after their dreams, they go after their goals, we all will be winning. You know how many damn successful black people we got out here right now? Like, I've been in Atlanta since November of 2019. And when I tell you, it, re it really made me feel like, bitch, you better step your shit up. Girl, you doing stuff? Yeah, that's cute and all. You making money, that's cute and all. But did you see that? Did you see this? Like, I see shit like that. Like Pinky, right? Pinky was slutty vegan. I met her. We text. You know, she cool as shit. I watch her and I'm watching her journey. And it's very inspiring because she cool as shit. She, when she get on live and when she talk to people, she's very transparent about her walk. You know what I'm saying? And I'm friends with Corey from Support Black Colleges. And then I have a friend, Milky Mama. She's not in Atlanta, but she has like... Her online business did $10 million just from email marketing. Did you hear me? And then it's from automated email marketing, meaning this bitch literally did not send the email herself. Her system set it up. She, she took some time. She probably took a few days and, and set up her automation and everybody became automated. She, she made $10 million and didn't lift a finger. What? All you got to do is tell me once that is possible. I ain't going to question, oh, she must have did it. No. What? Girl, tell me what you did, girl. Girl, I'm going to be in your DM like, hey, best friend, girl, what you doing tomorrow? I will fly to California, girl. Is we having lunch? What is we doing? Well, tell me, what, how can I add value to you? Because I just want to sit down and talk to you so you can tell me your process. Like, what's, what's, what, what app do you use for email marketing? And what was your strategy? Like, I, you know, like. Instead of 
questioning, like, oh no, that couldn't have happened like that. I'm about to find out how she did it. <laughs> like what I tell you, I literally, I went in, I went in that lady DM girl with your phone number, girl. And she's like, hey, Judy, girl. You know, like people respect somebody that's about their business. Like a lot of people think that us as entrepreneurs don't be talking to nobody. I will, I will pour into anybody that I can, especially if I see, um, especially if I see you trying. If I see you trying and all you need is a little push, hell yeah, I'm gonna give you that push. I'm gonna give you that push and I'm gonna try to give you connections. I'm gonna try to, hey, such and such coming over there. Let me tell you about them before they come. Like, that's who I am. That's who I will always be. But if you're not doing nothing and you asking me to take you to the door, open the door, walk you in, introduce you to the people, write down the things to say and tell you what vendor to do. No, nah, we're not doing that. We're not doing that, but I'll definitely push you in. I'll definitely give you a nudge if you're slipping too. I, I, I'll do that just like I want somebody to do that for me. But like I said, that's why I don't like, and, and I, I feel like I've been talking about this too much, but I guess because it's been on my heart so much. Ever since the show happened, I think I got like 100,000 more followers, right? And I said, them motherfuckers can go back where they came from. Not all of them, because I, I, I love I love some of y'all. Hey, y'all. But the ones that come in the comments with all that bullshit, I don't do that on my page. I, I feel like my page is a place for positivity. I feel like my followers inspire each other in the comments. My followers are nice to each other in the comments. Like, the only time they go off is, you know, with somebody saying something crazy, so they just go off. But don't come on my page with negative energy, because that spreads. If I'm going to spread something, let me spread positive energy. Let me spread education. Let me spread, girl, you could do it too. I am not going to be the person that's spreading. It's okay to come on my page talking shit, not only to me, but to anybody in the comments. We don't do that. We don't do that over here. We don't do that over here. Man... I feel blessed to be able to say that God has given me a platform and an opportunity to be able to have a, have, have a comfortable conversation in front of people and just say, this is what I did. I ain't trying to sugarcoat it. I'm not trying to make it seem like it's something that it ain't. I ain't trying to say, you know, it's, this is what I did. This is how I did it. And I'm still learning. And I'm not perfect. And God is far from finished with me. Wait till y'all see 2022. Wait till y'all see what I do in 2022, Lord. See, that's another thing. Like, we be wanting shit, or we be asking for stuff. Because I'm sorry, I'm a Christian that curse. I'm, I'm trying, but I'm working on myself. We be asking God for stuff, but we don't be ready for it. Like, I had asked God for something, right? So, my company does, it, it increases every year. But one year we went from two six to um, we went from two six in a year to the next year we made seven four right, and that was that was like a that was like a pretty big jump. So the years after that we grew, but it wasn't that much of a jump. So I was like, God, okay, tell me what it is in this season that you want for me to learn, so I can be back on my expedited growth, right? And. After hiring somebody, firing, hiring, firing, hiring, and making a whole bunch of expensive mistakes, I realized that what I was asking for, I wasn't even prepared for. And had he given it to me when I asked for it, my company probably would not only, it would not not have sustained, but I probably would have lost it. Because, so... In my business, and y'all know I'm transparent, so in my business, um, when we do, when we get more distribution, like when you get more doors, more stores, every single store you go into, there's a cost of doing business. If I sell this to Rite Aid, a thousand of them, right? And let's just say they don't sell. And Rite Aid has to sell it for 50% off. Rite Aid charges me the 50% off. And if they have to ship, if they have to take it off, they show if it don't sell at all, they charge you for that too. So it's not as simple as, 
oh, you get in store. You have to get in store. You have to know your consumer to be able to pull it off the shelf. And you have to go into store a certain kind of way. Like Target is a higher price store. Walmart is everyday low price. So we had to go into Walmart. We went into Walmart with our regular price and then had to take our price down. We were performing well, but we had to take our price down because here it is. We're sitting on shelf at $20 a fucking bottle for shampoo. And they got people selling shampoo for $7. So in order to make it like, in order to make it make sense, we now have had to had to um, look at the whole setup. So now it's like you once you learn, it's like all the lessons that I learned, I now know how to attack it. But the things that I was asking for ahead of time, like Lord, give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that. Had I got that shit when I asked for it, man, when I tell you, I would have. Y'all know, I know y'all hate people with crying videos, but y'all would have seen me with a crying video. When I tell you, because I would have not understood building a lifestyle, having all these damn people that, um, that work for me, that, that I support, and you know, like I take care of my mom and all the rest of that, I would not have understood our lives having to change. So now that I've had to sit in the lesson of what I had to learn which was almost three levels of business, by the way. And that's, and, 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 and I'll, I'll speak to that. Like, I felt like there was this level that I learned a lesson on, but God didn't move me. So there was this level that I learned a lesson on, but God didn't move me. But then there was this level that made all of them made sense. So now what we're looking at for 2022, it's not, I'm not looking to increase by one level. I know God is taking me up three levels. And I don't have no doubt about that. And I'm sitting on here right now speaking about this confidently. Not because I not only because I have faith, but because, again, this is how retail works. In order to go on shelf January 2022, you actually have to go in front of them summer of 2021. And then they tell you what you get by about August 2021. So. I already know what we're doing for 2022 because they Walmart has told us what they're what they're taking in. Walmart has told us how many doors they're increasing us by. We have, I think, three or four stores that now want us that we're going into. We know how many products are gonna be on shelf. We know how many stores we're going into. So I so the distribution that I have now is about to increase like times 10. So I had to sit in this. But I had to sit in this and not, I wasn't sitting in this and saying, God, why this person, why that person? I was like, God, what's the lesson in this? I really don't get it. What's the lesson in this? And then when I learned the lesson, okay, well, I'm, I'm ready. I learned the lesson. So then we go to the next level lesson. Okay, I, I'm ready. I learned the lesson. And then we go to the next level lesson. Oh, I got, I'm ready, God, for real this time. Like, you know, like I'm here, God, you know. But it was to go from here to here. And I just had to sit and wait in it. And the crazy part about it is, okay, I'm definitely, I, I'm definitely going, I'm, I got to pin this comment because I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. Um, the crazy part about it is I lost a lot of money making mistakes when I learned. But let me talk about this so I can unpin this comment. How you talk about God while you sleeping with women? You know God don't like that. I'm going to address this one time and one time only because we don't get on here and judge people. And one thing you will never do to me is judge me by my sin. Um, because a lot of people, their sin is a little bit more silent. So if there's an issue that I have, that I have with God, I mean, if there's an issue that, that, that I'm working on, that's between me and God. That's a conversation between me and God. So because I'm a sinner, which you are, I'm not supposed to talk about God. I'm not supposed to keep saying he's the reason that all of this happened for my life. Why? And he is. Why? This is why people don't go to church. That's why people feel like they're not welcome. 
This is why, this is exactly why. That's exactly why. Like everybody wants to know why the outcast cling to each other and, and why stuff is getting so outlandish is because we are not welcome we are not welcoming them into the body of Christ. We make it as if a person has to be perfect within their walk to be to, to have a conversation with God. Last time I checked, he welcomed the sinner and all, the prostitute and everything. So I'm gonna preach about God no matter what it is I'm doing. Just to be clear, just so you know. Child, bitch, I be wanting to punch people so bad, Lord, and then you got me cursing, Lord. People kill me with that. That be the same people sleeping with people's husband. Or fucking on dogs. Like, come on, don't do that. Don't do that. We're not about to do that. Don't do that. Don't do that because I'm... I'm Lord, help me, help me stop cursing. That's it, Lord. I know I cursed a lot. I be trying not to, but they made me do it. Again, thank you for viewing. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll be sure to see you in the next video.